And then the final person, well, I guess there were the final person that we read, Julia de Burgos, who also migrated before 1950. She, she left Puerto Rico in 1940 and um, was, spent a, couple, spent a little bit of time in, in New York and then, I mean, and then spent time in, um, in Cuba and then came back to New York by 1942 and stayed in New York until her death in 1953. But um, she's another person, right, another woman who migrated in this early period and is not included in these, in a lot of these. It's, it's at the end of the pioneer generation, but still she, her narratives are often not included, although she is well known both on the island and in, Puerto, and in, in New York. Um, any thoughts on these poems? What did you, did you like the poetry? Yeah. yeah. You did? You liked it? Denise? I don't like poetry. You don't like poetry at all? <laughs> Are you a literature professor? Are you a literature teacher? Spanish language. <laughs> language. Oh, you Spanish. only teach language? Yeah. You don't teach literature. any other literature? No. Okay. Um, what did you like about the poetry? Oh, gosh. I was to say, I, it, it, it sounded to me like good poetry and, and, and an authentic voice. Uh -huh. Not derivative of other poetry I have read. I, I don't, I don't, not being a literature teacher, it's hard to tell you why I liked it other than I liked it, but I mm -hmm. think it, it's, it's good, original. Uh, it Let's, works uh, okay. on an emotional level and, and a Let's think um, thematically. Do we see any themes that parallel some of the other themes that women have written about in the in the what we've read so far for this for this week? What are the kinds of things that the, she's writing about? So some, something I I, I tore apart. So I don't know. Whom are we? I don't have all of us here. That's it. Oh, That's yeah, it right there. It's the front page that I... Okay. It's the same one. Two Julia de Burgos is one. Does somebody want to read? Maybe we should read a poem. Right here, yeah. It talks about the bodies of a woman and how they belong to everything else. They don't have any independence. Oh, that women have no independence yeah, and no freedom. No right. That's in that first one, to Julia de Burgos, right? So she's writing, basically writing a poem to herself. herself. She's speaking to herself and saying, it's almost in this poem, like there's a split voice, right? There's uh, the one Julia de Burgos who conforms to society's norms and does whatever she's told. And then there's the other Julia de Burgos who's the poet that doesn't really, uh, is very rebellious and resents the fact that she's expected to conform to these norms, to all of these social norms. And um, right down at the, towards the end of that poem, the last couple of stanzas, she says, you curl your hair and paint yourself, not me. The wind curls my hair, the sun paints me. You are a housewife, resigned, submissive, tied to the prejudices of men, not me. Unbridled, I am a runaway uh, Rocinante, snorting horizons of God's justice. Who's Rocinante? Talking about this horse. Talking about this horse, about this horse right? Um, ass. Huh? It wasn't it a, like a mule or an ass? No, no, he had a horse. He had a horse. <laughs> it was Sancho uh, Panza that had the mule. Yeah, was um... You and yourself have no say. Everyone governs you. Your husband, your parents, your family, the priest, the dressmaker, the theater, the dance hall, the auto, the fine furnishings, the feast, champagne, heaven and hell, and the social, what will they say? So this is... Um,
this this was not photocopied properly that poem is finished on the next page this second half uh, in me, no. in me, no. not in me in me only my heart governs only my thoughts my governs in me is me okay do you see where do you see where i am